I'm going to be looking at example components in MCC Melody. In this video, I'm going to use the ADCC example. I happen to have a Q43 Curiosity Nano, and we're going to get some of the ADC examples working. So, new project. Uh, you can see that the part is, is selected by default with a connected board from the kit window. And here is our board, latest compiler. ADCC. And MCC on finish is selected by default. So I can select MCC Melody. And here we have an empty MCC Melody project for the Q43. If I open the Content Manager, I can see that there are three examples here, ADCC, Timer, and UART, and I'm going to be using the ADCC example. So under Drivers, ADCC, I see the component itself and the ADCC example. So um, you can see the question mark here and the different examples. So the first one, just a, some instructions on how to configure the data visualizer, and then um, we'll see we get a printf and toggle a debug I.O. on an ADC sample. There's a video showing how to do this um, using the API reference. This video <laughs> is the new version. And uh, secondly, we'll use a, a data streamer uh, with the ADC result. Uh, we'll add a sample count and again toggle the debug I.O. And then finally, once we have the framework and basics in place, um, we can do something more interesting. Here we have an ADC result. We have a last spike. So we're going to be using a spike detect interrupt, which is a rate of change interrupt, at least in the way that we configure it in this example. And so when we change the pot value more quickly, we will get, um, we'll toggle the debug IO on the spike detect and increment a number, a spike threshold. Okay. So that's what the examples do. We can add this to our project. And uh, the page I started off on at the beginning of the video is this one. Um, if you're new to the example components, what they are and how they work. Uh, the next thing you'll see is we have these three examples. We select the first one. Next, we get to select an implementation. Implementations relate to um, this document, Design Patterns for Control Flow, which is really about different ways to organize main.c and other application level files. Um, some overview of the Melody API, and then how those API relate to building a basic poll design pattern or interrupts and callbacks, on top of which you can build state machines or go in the direction of low power. For now, we're going to select polled as our first starting point. And our first order of business is to add an ADCC to our project. OK, so add to the project, default configuration, so job done with um, our ADC. OK, uh, add UART from drivers. So you can see that there's a UART example available as well, but we have the instructions needed built into this particular example. And coming here, we can see that we need to select the UART connected to the serial CDC port. So in this case, from our kit window, we have the access to the schematics. And the schematics are going to help us um, 
here in this particular example there is a specific UART. It may not be specific, we'll see in our own schematic and from that we can find out TX and RX pins. So kit window schematic. And naturally these examples are general by design. So if you have your own board, your own schematic, you know, please use that. Okay, so here UART 135, so there's no specific UART, but we do need RF0 as TX and RF1 as RX. So um, UART, UART 1, 1305 we could use. Um, TX, RF0, uh, and RX, RF1. RX, RF1. So let's move our example across here. So we selected a dependency, connect to our CDC UART. Uh, we wanted a board rate of 115, uh, 15 to 100. Okay, board rate error is fine. Um, Redirect to printf, yes. And uh, OK, now we need to select an analog input. So uh, the Curiosity Nano Explorer, um, we'll find some of these mappings uh, of the pins and um, go to the kit window. So we have Explorer pinouts for all Curiosity Nanos. And we have the Nano Explorer itself, uh, user guide, etc. So let's just uh, I go to the user guide. I just want to show you the pot area here. Okay, so the pot is what we're going to use. Uh, rotary pot available to the user as an analog input between 0 and 3.3. .3. Okay, um, and for us, all we need to know is we go to the Explorer pronounce for all Curiosity Nanos and we look for Q43 here and here's our pot and we can see that that is RA7. So that's the pin that we need. Okay, <clears throat> so RA7 is our analog input and so we can uncheck. Uh, there's a default of RA0 and it's there. Even if we uncheck it, it just swaps the order. Um, but I, I think it's probably because you'll get some errors if there's no um, pin selected. There needs to be a default pin because some of the API uh, assume that there's already a channel selected. Okay, so we've selected our analog input. Uh, we did the UART TX as we were working with the UART. A LED pin as output and a debug I.O. LED is RF3 and debug I.O. which happens to be on the switch but we're not using it as an input, we're using it as an output for debug I.O. and so RB4. So RF3 for our LED and RB4 and notice here uh, that's pin grid view and pins rename. So under pins, um, so this is system pins and we can always neaten this up here once we have selected a PLIB. Um, RF3 is our LED and RB4 is our debug IO. Okay, ADC, AD, so now we go to notifications can see that there's an ADC clock divider. Check the time for ADC time. A to D conversion is the TAD and the MCC notification. So uh, this info box basically shows us that with this notification we should just um, increase the ADC clock divider. 
So ADC, and here's our clock divisor. And you can see that we're almost at that, at 968 nanoseconds, and it needs to be a microsecond, and it's happy now. So you can see that there were three notifications here. The UART configuration, so the board rate error is less than 2.2. So this would have been a problem if we had um, like a much slower clock. Now you can see uh, the UART's actually giving us an error directly. Um, and now there's no ADC error. No, well, yes, it's giving us a different error. Now it wants a higher clock. Anyway, we go back to the original clock that we had, 64 megahertz. Okay, so the ADC is happy, the UART is happy, and now check if clock in is on A and X. So here um, on this board using that part, it just so happens that um, on some of these microcontrollers, um, the clock in pin is on um, the same pin as the part. So the way that we can do this is come into here, our project, open device data sheet, browse for the data sheet, and search for clock in. And here's our pin allocation table. And you can see that analog 7 happens to be on the same pin as clock in. Yeah, I know that this will catch, <laughs> catch the best of us um, sometimes. So the um, so system configuration bits and um, okay. Uh, disable the, the oscillator. Okay, and um, that should be good. We should have our co correct configuration now. And now we can click on the generate button. If you are new to this, um, after clicking that, here's where we're going to go and find the file, copy the code snippet between the, uh, between the dashed lines, and then we're going to look at the to-dos. Okay. So, generate under example ADCC. And find our main. Okay. So, we selected a pin. And we had channel A in A7. looks happy now. Build. Okay, and we can now program this project. Okay, so we're taking a delay of 500 milliseconds and then we are taking an ADC sample. So to double check how we can run this, we come into the specific example. And some instructions here. Open the data visualizer, display as raw data on the time plot, and then on the COM port, uh, select our board rate, 115-200, and then display as text in the terminal. So, data visualizer. Um, so, display as raw data for our debug IR. Okay, so just uh, fiddling around with it a little bit, we get our debug IO going and um, 115200 for our COM port and put this on the terminal. Okay. And you can see that the example is working as expected. Okay, stay tuned for the next one.